Okay, we'll record. Yes. Thank you so much. Now Rabbi Nachum says there's also a good there's also a good wind, there's also a good energy, there's also a good ruach. Um, which is a wind or a spirit. As it says, let your good ruach guide me on level ground. As it says in Tehillim, Ruach Tova Tancheni the Eretz Mishor. So so here's a proof that there's also a good wind. And what Rabbi Nachman explains here that this good wind or this good energy, this is the aspect of prophecy, a divine spirit. I'll take a drink meanwhile. Today in New York, I think it was the hottest, thickest humidity I've ever seen in my life. Anybody agree with me? Really interesting day. Okay, now, get to the next level. Now he's going to explain a little bit about prophecy. It's not, nothing to do with us, yet. Now he's going to start from the top and work his way down. But when a person is a mixture of good and evil, he cannot receive truthful prophecies. Okay. Because it's written of Saul, he began to prophesy and he lay naked. Usually prophecy, you don't use the word naked. Naked means that he was completely stripped of, 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 of reality. He lost his mind because he couldn't handle the, the prophecy. And Rashi says, he explains that this connotes madness because he was mixed up with this depression. He couldn't channel the higher level of prophecy that was coming down. So it got mixed up in him. Instead of him being the vessel for it, he got mixed up on him and he, and he lost it. Okay, so now they're going to go into a little bit more of what this prophecy is and what the music is. So, when Saul was getting heavy depression, his, um, his assistant says, Let our Lord order the courtiers attending you to look for someone skilled at playing. His hand will play and it will be good for you. Samuel 16.16. 16. You know, Rabbi Nachman now is going to go into the real stuff. Here we go. The person whose hand plays an instrument collects and gathers up his hand, with his hand, the good ruach, the ruach of prophecy, from within the ruach of depression. Rabbi Nachman now is saying that in the air, there are radio waves, microwaves. Rabbi Nachman explains also there's waves of happiness and waves of depression in the air. That's what he says, I'm not making it up. And it's because uh, uh, Rabbi Nassim Maimon, who, who I get all my um, uh, commentary from, explains that the Ruach is a switch hitter. It bats left and it bats right. Meaning that it's a mix. You can do whatever you want with it. Just like the imagination is a mix, everything is a mix. You can do anything you want with anything. Just like you have nitroglycerin, it could uh, save a person with a heart uh, problem. I was once on the train, on the F train, and a guy just fainted. He's having a heart attack. And like people, like I was standing over him, how can I help you? And he says, like, nitroglycerin in my uh, pocket. And some woman took it out, put it in his mouth, and he started to wake up. A little bit of nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin can also blow up your, blow up a house. So that's how powerful the imagination is. That's how powerful music is. You can do a lot of things with music. Now he's going to explain. The person who plays the music, thus he, the person must be skilled at playing. That he knows, knowing how to collect and gather and find the components of the wind one by one in order to build the tune, the joy. To build the good 
wind, the wind of prophecy, the air of prophecy, the good air, which is opposed to the air of depression. As we know in music, you have blues, you have Enya, you have Black Sabbath, you have wedding music, you have sad love songs, happy love songs, minor notes, major notes, all kinds of music touching everybody. If you're depressed, you listen to depressed music. If you're happy, you listen to happy music. Right? So, it's very powerful stuff. Super powerful stuff. So he says here that the musician has to, for he has to raise and lower his hand on the instrument he is playing in order to direct and build up the joy to perfection, like a crescendo. Rabbi Nachman says in a commentary, an accomplished musician forms the tones and rhythm that build the tune note by note by skillfully moving his hand across the instrument, putting very varying amounts of pressure on the different strings or keys. With these movements of the hand, he extracts the good air from the bad air, and he builds the memory, he builds the melody, and the resultant joy to perfection. Menachem will now explain the gathering, the good ruach alludes to gathering and emphasizing the good things in one's life. I have to tell you that when I got originally divorced, I was extremely, extremely depressed, and I felt that I was falling into a mental illness. I said, if this keeps going, I'm going to fall. I knew it. I felt it. And I had to do something about it. And I went and I took guitar lessons. I knew I had to take care of myself. And this is what I wanted to do. And I took guitar lessons for like a year and a half. And it saved my life. I played the notes. It was beautiful. So it's interesting how I remembered that. Okay. Thus, when the prophet hears this music from one who is skilled at playing, he receives from the musician the ruach, the air, or the spirit of prophecy, which the musician gathered with his hand from within the ruach of depression. The musician was able to channel the energy that's in the air. He was selecting the minor notes from the major notes and building up the tune. And meanwhile, Wow. The musician is building up the tune, and the pro and the prophet is getting the energy. Now, regular people who hear music, you get happy, right? You get very, the endorphins start moving. You get really happy, right? Right. The, the the prophet gets happy. He goes to the next level. He starts getting prophecy. We don't know what prophecy is. It says there are three people. It says that when after the temple was destroyed, God took away prophecy, and He also took away idol worship. It's a balance. You can't have prophecy unless you have idol worship. If he takes away the prophecy, he takes away the idol worship. People are not people are not uh, bowing down to idols now. But that, but that there are three things. There are three people that still have prophecy no matter what. But nobody believes them. It's a young child. Are you that why he's sleeping? Three people still have prophecy in the world, but no one believes who they are. A child a crazy person and an old person. Baby says, ah, oh, you know, mommy, I want a brother. <laughs> or a crazy person, no one believes him. Or an old person, ah. It says in the Gemara, in the Gemara, that God channels all this stuff to these people. Nobody believes them. What's happening will happen. Pretty interesting. funny how we're learning about this during the, the month of Av, but you have to sort of tone down the music, but not the Simcha. How am I doing on the time? Great. Doing good. Okay. I thought we have to tone down the Simcha too. It's supposed to tone it down a little bit, but it can't be said. So have to be connected to it. But you can't have simchas and stuff like that. When I was a wedding photographer for eight years, I had no wedding. You can't shoot weddings. Why? During this time? It's out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, the whole month? Like, you know, the nine days, the nine and, days and, yeah. and this and that. 
So what if photographers in Judaism have a hard time? You know, simchas, they wait. And then when, after the holidays, it's like 20 a day. And they're begging for photography. <laughs> it's insane. Okay, now Rabbi Nachman is going to go deeper into the lesson. This is the explanation of his hand will play and it will be good for you. Specifically, it will be good for you, the prophet, because he gathers and refines the good from within the evil. Okay. Evil is a very heavy term, but they do use the word ra over here. So, uh, Rabbi Nassim Maimon said it's like an artist. An artist has 400 crayons in front of him, and he eyes, he closes his eyes, and he just picks crayons, and he starts writing on the table, and it comes out horrible. But if it's an artist, he sees what he's doing, he knows it's a refinement, it's a refinement of the talent, and then he could do something very beautiful, and he could affect a lot of people. You have a Monet, beautiful artist, it affects thousands of millions of people all over the world. So music is the source of happiness and sadness. Okay, now he's going to go to the next level. Now he's going to go back to what the hand, this is going to get very beautiful now. You're cold? I don't think my jacket. This is where it gets very interesting. And the main gathering and the building of the ruach of prophecy, of the wind and the spirit of prophecy, is by means of the hand, which we said before. Rabbi Nachman explains that the hand is the place of the source of the imagination and the source of prophecy. What does that mean? Page 207. Yeah. Uh, second sentence from the top. Okay. Now, Rabbi Nachman explains, it's going to blow your mind. The main gathering and building up of the of the of the wind of prophecy is by means of the hands because the source of the spirit and the wind and the air are in your hands as it is written in the Tehillim and in your hand I will deposit my ruach before you go to sleep this is what they say 